Hey everyone, what's happening? Solar Steve from Solar Nation with the long-awaited and anticipated video, the continuation of the Outback Off-Grid documentation video number one. And this one is going to be on the inverters themselves and the power panel uh, that everything's housed in that you see right here. So basically what we're looking at is a Flexware 500 power panel from Outback Power Systems and the inverters that are mounted in the middle are VFX 3524 inverters. They are vented. Uh, they are not grid interactive as the G series is and they are not the mobile series that includes uh, a switching for the neutral wire uh, that you will commonly see in marine and mobile applications. But this is a true off-grid uh, inverter and singly they produce 120 volt at 3500 watts continuous or about 145 amps on the DC side. So let's get to it and uh, and we will show you particularly what we got here. Now this is the power panel itself and on the left side of the power panel you see the, the AC breakout box that, uh, that uh, allows you to bring in your incoming power or your generator power and you can see the bus bars and how they're labeled. You can see that we have a few breakers here. We have a bypass breaker, we have the inverter breakers, and we have AC in. Now, if, now getting a little ahead of myself, but if I was to remove this mechanical limiter here, that would allow me to flip both breakers into the on position, which has the effect of backfeeding the residential wiring system that currently supplies incoming AC power, uh, but certainly uh, you don't. This is a safety mechanism. Okay, you don't want to do this unless you're absolutely sure that grid power is not present and that you have sufficiently taken steps to prevent backfeeding through your main service disconnect, uh, which is the point of entry where AC power would come into your uh, particular residence. You can see here that we have the ground bus bar. You can see that the ground to neutral bond is installed directly beneath the green ground wire that you see there. And right next to it is of course the AC neutral bus bar where of course all the neutral well wires will come into. When it gets it gets interesting when you get up here because of course you have four separate bus bars. Of course this is designed to run in a 240 volt mode. Uh, it doesn't have to be but certainly the provisions are there uh, if you did want to run in 240 volt mode. Uh, so you have AC in uh, both your black terminal and your red terminal and your AC out, both your black and red terminal. And of course, you know, all of the wires uh, ultimately go to the breakers and then go through the appropriate chases in the side of the power panel and comes across to here. Now I took off one of the covers of the inverters just to show you what it looks like underneath the uh, the clothing, so to speak. Now, right now the system is off, and I will demonstrate the power up procedure for the inverters themselves uh, during this uh, video. Now, getting to the particulars here. Now, these inverters are installed with the surge suppression circuitry, which is what you're looking at right now. You don't have to buy this. 
In fact, this right here where my finger is pointing is the AC surge suppression side uh, of each inverter. And each inverter does have it. If you look up here, uh, it is also installed here. But basically this is the point of entry to each inverter where you're going to be in, uh, hooking up incoming AC power and outgoing AC power as well as the ethernet connection that goes to the hub that you see right here. And it all connects via category five ethernet cable, okay? Moving along to the DC side of the inverter, uh, you see that it is installed with two aught fine strand copper cable. And you can see how, it, you know, there are lugs that the ends of the cable attach to. Same thing exists up here. It's just you can't see it because the cover's on it. Okay. Uh, you can see here that uh, our date of manufacture was the second quarter of 08. There's our ground lug, which takes us over to the DC side ground bus bar. Now, I'm not going to get into the DC side of the power panel in this video, but when I do the charge controller video, uh, that's when I will take the cover off of the DC side and show that to you. Uh, now, getting to some of the specifications of, uh, of this inverter. Oh, and if you want to see a wiring diagram, this is basically what you're looking at. It's probably kind of hard to read, uh, but certainly if you go to outbackpower.com, uh, you can observe these wiring schematics for yourself. Uh, now we're going to go to the appendix ratings and we're going to go to the inverter that I have just so that you can see uh, what the actual specs are. Of course, here we are, VFX 3524. Nominal DC input, 24 volt, 120 volt nominal AC voltage, and the frequency, which is 60 hertz, which is your standard residential power form uh, in North America. If you were in Europe, uh, that will be a different number. And I'm not sure what your voltage spec is, uh, but I know that your Hertz is down to 50 Hertz. Now, Outback Power Systems does sell an import or rather an export version uh, that is designed for European power form. So uh, this uh, certainly does apply to you if you live across the pond uh, in the UK or in Europe and other countries that maybe use a different uh, type of power. Uh, continuous power rating at 25 degrees Celsius ambient, 3,500 volt amps, which, which basically means 3,500 watts or 3.5 kilowatts. Okay, continuous. Uh, of course, that's going to be occurring at about 29.2 amps on the AC side. And now an interesting one is idle power that you see right here. And this is basically how much power does the unit consume when it's just standing by. Okay. Uh, once it goes on, goes into search mode, that power uh, cuts uh, by a factor of 10, roughly, uh, which is an important figure because, um, you know, you don't want to be pulling off your batteries any more than you have to. Now, this is a very important spec when you're looking at inverters. Typical efficiency, 92%. Okay, so all you people out there that think that inverters are just going to waste all your power, uh, that's not necessarily true. Uh, the ability to run AC appliances 
uh, off of a, a DC power source and you're only losing uh, 8% is not bad. In fact, a 92% efficiency rating is one of the highest uh, in the industry. Of course, your total harmonic distortion at 2%, quite consistent with full sine wave power, which is another important uh, consideration when you're looking at inverters. Okay. Uh, and you can, of course, run down the line here. And I think anybody that knows what they're looking at is going to say, hey, I think that's pretty impressive. You know, uh, so basically what has happened is because of the mate, which is the way you program this inverter, and you know, this is the way you program everything in the entire system. It's one place where everything hooks in. I have programmed these inverters to run in what's called a classic stack configuration meaning that each inverter is responsible for each hot leg uh, in a 240 split phase system. So it's capable of running in 240 volt mode when both legs sense load, but is equally able to service 120 volt loads on each appropriate leg. Of course, you know, the top inverter being wired into the black bus bar the bottom, actually it's the other way around, the bottom one is in the black bus bar. The top inverter is running the red bus bar uh, on the AC side. So depending on what side of the bus bar a load is present, will will determine which inverter is actually supplying the load. Uh, certainly this does mean that uh, you may have a little bit more efficiency loss by keeping two inverters powered up, uh, but certainly the convenience of this type of configuration, I think, outweighs that loss, especially when you consider uh, that uh, this is being recharged daily off of my PV array. Uh, it has the ability to run off of pretty much any kind of generator power uh, that you may want to throw at it, which is one of the virtues of the G series, or the, excuse me, the V series uh, and the FX series, the true off-grid versions. Uh, the G series, which is designed to sell power uh, once the batteries are full, isn't as able to handle generator power as the true off-grid varieties, and that's why I went with this. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, one of the other very nice advantages of the Outback system is just the sheer ruggedness of its construction. I mean, these things are built tough. Uh, being the vented model, uh, it does have fans inside that allow for active cooling. Uh, and that's why you get uh, a little bit more power output from a V-series than you do a straight FX inverter. Uh, being indoors and not subject to the elements, it was a good match in this case. If you were going to be mounting uh, one of these inverters, say, in an exterior location, especially if you were uh, in a, a high humidity environment or someplace where pests and ver vermin, uh, particularly insects, might become a problem, uh, you know, things like bees and wasps uh, and things like that, then you may elect to go with the straight FX, which is a completely sealed unit. Uh, you know, so you certainly have that ability to do that. Now, of course, AC power comes into the, the power panel from up here. One side of those wires comes from the main service disconnect panel. The other set of wires goes back out to a sub panel where the loads for this particular building are being served. Now, because of the way the breakers are configured, uh, I have the ability to turn off those loads and bypass, which will allow me just to run off of AC power, or uh, in invert mode, 
uh, it will be, then actually be powering off of the inverter. Uh, and once I then flip AC in, it tells the inverters that grid power is established and it just basically passes through the inverter without consuming any battery power, you see. Okay, we'll be right back with part two.